Upon asking someone how they would categorize John Ford's 1956 film The Searchers, the most common response will be as a western. While this is true, many don't think of the horror aspects that also accompany this movie, which don't allow it to be categorized solely in the western genre. From the common horror theme of an imbalanced society to Wayne's portrayal of Ethan Edwards, an unlikable and sometimes terrifying lead character, the searchers can indeed be read as a horror film just as much as a western. In Angela and Dalian's book, The Horror Sensorium, Media and the Senses, she points out a familiar horror trope where the world appears to be in a transition state, teetering at a point that threatens to collapse into absolute chaos. In the case of the searchers, this transition state is the people living on the plains trying to return back to normal after the war, but now combating Comanches kidnapping and killing those who live there. The best example is 20 minutes into the film, when Aunt Martha and her family, minus Lucy and Debbie, are burned alive in their home. Scenes like this are horrifying in themselves. Here, terror is encouraged by techniques used in horror films such as Ford's rare use of an emphatic zoom on Lucy's face upon her realization of the situation. But, this catalytic catastrophe is also used to highlight the instability of the world, as well as the asymmetry within Pauli and Ethan because of it. The searchers cannot be discussed without mentioning John Wayne's unconventional role of Ethan. Displaying both protagonist and antagonist qualities, Ethan would fit into the feature of horror where one experiences the loss of identity, system, and order. The viewer witnesses this loss. Upon the discovery of the ravaged homestead, before the audience has really formed an opinion about him, we see that he is genuinely affected by the onslaught. Ford employs a medium close shot, only of Ethan looking at the burning land surrounded by negative space in the background, insinuating vulnerability, in order to add depth to his character. It is a moment meant to convey that despite his tough demeanor, Ethan genuinely did care about his family and is not a bad person at heart. Interestingly, the very next shot of Ethan makes him illegible, as if his identity has literally been taken away upon the discovery. Once among the wreckage, Wayne is only legible for a moment until he finds the bodies. With the camera in the structure just inside the doorway, Ethan is illegibly framed within the door frame as a silhouette. Ford uses pictorialism here to explain what has happened in a visual form. If one were to freeze the frame to show Ethan kneeling in the door frame, his head dropped, it is not hard to imagine the catastrophic scene inside the house. We don't need to see inside in order to know what's happened. With Paulie's attempts to get inside, another horror trope becomes present concerning the unseen. When he tries to get in the house, Ethan holds him back saying don't go in there. And ultimately going so far as to incapacitate an insistent Paulie by punching him in the face to spare him what Ethan thinks is not to be seen. What's left unseen is a popular meta-technique used in films employing psychology, in that what is left unseen heads to the viewer's imagination, the horror unfolds in our minds, the lack of knowledge, and what we can imagine is far more frightening, than actually seeing what happened. This character, this lonely character, comes out of the, out of the desert or something, and uh, uh, he's absolutely terrifying. Martin Scorsese, in a review of the film, says that Ethan is genuinely scary in his hatred and bitterness, and it sets him apart from the conventional protagonist role roles that Wayne usually played, popularized by American films. It's no coincidence that the character of Ethan was so out of place for a typecasted actor, like John Wayne. For some perspective, it's like comedic actors taking serious roles. Like Steve Carell as John Dupont in Foxcatcher for example. While highlighting the actor's talent, an unexpected role, like Ethan or Dupont, for normally pigeonholed actors, like Wayne and Carell adds to the disorientation and general uneasiness of the film. For example, Carell's portrayal of Dupont is quite chilling. The viewer can't help but see Carell differently while watching Foxcatcher and even afterwards. It is no different with Wayne and his portrayal of Ethan. It was an affecting decision to make Ethan such a dark character, played by a usually charming John Wayne, that ultimately made people pay attention to and remember the film. Ethan's thirst for revenge adds to the horrific atmosphere. 
It's his hatred that separates him from every other character in the film. Ford depicts this visually, by hardly ever showing Ethan in the same shot as the others, but also through his abrasive dialogue and actions. For example, the scene where Ethan and the rest of the search party ride up to the two men who have discovered the body of a Comanche under a rock. While others start to break down, he sits calmly on his horse, even demeans Nesby for showing weakness, and then matter-of-factly asks. Why don't you finish the job? What good did that do you? By what you preach, none. But what that Comanche believes, ain't got no eyes, he can't enter the spirit land, has to wander forever between the winds. You get it, Reverend. Come on, blanket head. Here, with brilliant character development, the audience learns that Ethan actually knows about the people he hates so much to the point of making them suffer even in death. His bitter racism has an extinction quality to it and lends a troubling and surprising aspect to a character that is supposed to be the hero. Debbie? Und mehr. Debbie? Debbie, don't you remember? I'm Martin, I'm Martin, your brother. Remember? The search has definitely flips convention on its head, which is a component to a horror film according to Dalianus, the horror genre is about crossing boundaries. The scene when Paulie and Ethan attempt to rescue Debbie the first time provides an unconventional and terrifying twist. Messing with the viewer's perceptions from the start, what with Debbie running down the dune behind Paulie and Ethan and sweet high strings playing that would normally indicate a positive moment. We think that this is the scene where they are finally reunited, yet, it is not the sweet scene that Ford initially sets us up for. When she confronts the two men, Debbie exhibits signs of Stockholm Syndrome, saying these are her people now and tries to shoo them away. This clearly does not settle well with Ethan. Again, shown alone in the frame with an expanse of negative space around him, he draws his gun making to shoot Debbie who, because she has likened herself to a Comanche, is no longer family to him. They have spent all this time searching for her, but for Ethan, a dead Comanche is better than a life even if it's his own niece, his rage blinds him. It is truly an unsettling twist to think Ethan would ever kill Debbie. Consequently, in the final rescue scene as Ethan chases Debbie down the dune, the viewer is unsure of what he will do. We certainly aren't expecting him to cradle her in his arms saying let's go home Debbie. After he threatened to kill her a short while ago. At the end, we have a ghost story. The finale of the film turns Ethan into a phantom. Upon delivering Debbie to the Jorgensons, the three walk into the house, camera inside, followed by Paulie and Laurie. All become illegible except Ethan, who stays outside like a spirit who must be invited inside, but he is not. The shot of him framed by the doorway looking inside has a resolution quality to it as if he has come to terms with his rampant hatred, and all is well because Debbie is safe. However, Ethan is still an outsider. Alone again with no place to call home, he walks away from the camera with the expanse of land in front of him, forced to be a drifter. In the end, it seems that The Searchers should not be called solely a western. The film spans across several genres including comedy, drama, and horror, that should be included when discussing this film. Ford's use of dark humor offers Wayne a chance to be more like his sassy familiar characters, that he was beloved for. While being successful in providing light moments in an otherwise darkly dramatic story, there are aspects of horror in the film that cannot be denied, from a world in turmoil to Ethan the anti-hero, which allows this unique western to be also be categorized as a horror film.